All right, my friends, we're gonna take a look at motion with magnetic drag. This is a useful scenario to understand because it shows up in a few ways in um, physics C, both in mechanics because of the motion with a, a linear a resistance that's linear to, in velocity, uh, and then also um, because of the electromagnetic effects we're gonna see like induced voltage, induced current. Um, so let's dive in. What's happening here is you have a rigid light frame of wire that's attached to a mass that's just gonna be dropped through a magnetic field and we're gonna look at what happens. Um, well, so when you drop this thing, um, you're gonna be losing inward flux as this thing falls out of the field. Um, so something to think about is, is we will lose inward flux. Well, so since we're losing inward flux, the system is gonna try to fight that change in flux by generating its own inward flux. So we need to make inward flux and the way to make inward flux in this system we want a field that points into the board here and so what's going to have to happen then is the, the system will run run its own current um, clockwise so we're going to get a clockwise current so what's going to happen is you'll have current going sort of up here over to the right here and down here, and then also this way in this bottom segment. If you take a look at what's happening though now, we now have wires carrying currents through magnetic fields. And so because of that, there's gonna be a force, a magnetic force on these current carrying wires. Um, well, so let's see what direction these forces would be. Well, this segment of, of this part of the wire that's still in the field, you would have current going this way through a field that points in, so that's going to generate a magnetic force to the left over here. It would be F magnetic. Um, that's happening on this side. On the right-hand side, though, you have current going down this way with, through a field that points in. That's going to make a magnetic force off to the right. And so those guys are going to be equal and opposite. They'll cancel each other out. If this were flexible wire, it might try to blow it out to the side but we'll say it's rigid, so it can't do that. Um, if you look at the top, you have current going to the right, through a field that points in, there's gonna be a magnetic force upward that's kind of, that's gonna resist as gravity tries to pull this thing out of the, out of the field. Um, so you'd have F magnetic pointing this way. Um, so what's gonna end up happening with this is you let it go, it starts to fall because of the force of gravity, mg. And as it starts to fall, you're gonna induce currents that's gonna to lead to this uh, magnetic force that kind of resists the motion. It's gonna act like a, a drag. It's gonna feel very syrupy if you were trying to pull this out of the field. Um, well, so that's the basic setup. So we're gonna look at a couple scenarios here and, and learn more about what's happening. Well, so first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna find the, the voltage that's induced that's actually motivating the current to go round and round. Um, and so a uh, way to do that is this induced voltage. The voltage that's induced can be found from the change in flux with time. Um, so this is Faraday's law. Um, sometimes people will put a negative sign here. I'm leaving it out because we already know the direction. So I'm just gonna find the magnitude of, the, um, of this induced EMF. Well, so flux is field times area. So we'd say the change in field times area with time as this thing falls. The field itself is constant. It's the area that's changing as this thing falls. And so we'll pull the field out of the what's changing, um, out of the argument of delta here. And so you'll get B times delta, and then the area is gonna be this length times, we're just gonna make up a dimension here to describe how long this dimension of the wires that's actually in the field. So I'm gonna call this dimension Y. And so the area would be LY. So B L Y over delta T. If you notice that only Y is changing here, this L dimension stays the same. So this Y dimension is gonna change as it falls out of the field. Well, delta Y over delta T, that's just how fast it's falling. And so what you get is B times L, which is constant. And then delta Y over delta T is nothing other than how fast it's falling. So this is BLV. Um, 
In physics 2, this is actually a little derived result that sits in the form of the sheet. In physics C, it does not. Um, because the idea is you're kind of expected to be able to get there from something like this. But if you happen to know this, um, you, you're able to use it on a, um, in a situation like this. Um, so the induced voltage um, goes like how fast you are going. It's directly proportional. Next, we're supposed to find the current. That's just Ohm's law. Um, B equals IR. Um, well, so all we have to do is divide that expression BLV by the resistance. And so what we learn is the current itself then is going to be BLV over R. So the current itself is going to depend on how fast you're going. Um, so that's the current as a function of, of how fast we're moving. All right. Well, so next what it asks, what we're trying to find here is the terminal velocity. So what's going to happen is you let it go, currents develop um, that are proportional to how fast you're going. And because of that current, you're going to get this magnetic force that's, that's upward. Um, and in fact, that magnetic force, since it's the force on a current carrying wire, that goes like, I remember it as bill, field times current times length, B-I-L. If you're ever asked about terminal velocity, um, something that's useful to think about is at terminal velocity, the acceleration of a system is zero. So the forces need to balance. And so what's going to happen here is mg, the force trying to accelerate it downward, is going to be balanced off by this magnetic force, BIL. So at, at terminal velocity, you'd have the weight mg equal to BIL. Right. Well, so far this is not useful for finding terminal velocity because we haven't invoked velocity yet. Um, but you notice we have the velocity um, related to the current up above. And so we can just make that substitution. And so what you get is mg equals b, the, the current is blv over r, um, and then times the length, um, capital L in this case. And so what we can do here is this is true at terminal velocity because these forces will balance then. Um, so this v in this case is actually the special velocity vt. Well, so we can just solve for vt. vt is going to be mg times, we'll multiply the r over, mgr, divided by b squared and divided by l squared. b squared, l squared. So that's supposed to be the terminal velocity. We can idiot check this a bit. If the object is very massive, it's going to fall faster through the, through the field, right? mg would be, would be greater. If the um, resistance were high, it would be very hard for this thing to run current. Um, so I guess we really should have in here, this thing needs to have an embedded resistance. Um, and so if this resistance was high, it would be very hard to run the current. This magnetic force then wouldn't be able to be very big until you were really moving fast. Um, and so the thing would fall pretty fast if the resistance was high. Um, next thing is if the field were big, then you'd have a big denominator, which would make a small terminal velocity. So of course, the syrupy effect of the field would be big if the, if the field itself was big. Uh, so that's terminal velocity. Most complex part of this, we're going to get a little greedy now and go for actually finding the function that represents how fast this would fall as a function of time if you dropped it from rest. And so the way to kick this off is instead of saying the acceleration zero, it's going to have a non-zero acceleration for much of its trip. Um, so you just run F equals MA, but let A be a non-zero acceleration. So the force, net force, is going to be what we have MG down. Let's call this the positive direction, that's which way it's going. Minus the magnetic force, which is BIL, otherwise known as, well, we can just substitute what we have in here b squared l squared over r times v. So your magnetic force is going to be velocity dependent. Notice it's acting just like air drag. Air drag, linear air drag, we represent as like lowercase b drag coefficient times v. This is, this b squared l squared over r is acting like a linear drag coefficient. Um, and then what we want to do since we're looking for v of t is substitute for a dv dt because velocity is the you know the time derivative the rate of change of 
acceleration. So this is now a differential equation for V that needs to be solved. Um, so we'll, a quick run through, there's different options for how you might want to handle the algebra. I, what I like to do, just kind of personal style, I like to clear the coefficient on the V, the thing, it's, this is definitely optional, but it's something I like to do. Clear the coefficient on the thing I'm trying to solve for. So what I'm gonna do is multiply by the reciprocal of this coefficient to just get rid of it here. And so what will happen is this term will become um, minus RMG over B squared L squared. Again, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying everybody by minus R over B squared L squared. And so by doing that, that'll make this plus V, that's me clearing the coefficient, um, and then equals, and then let's do the same thing. We're multiplying by minus R over B squared L squared. So this would be minus um, RM over B squared L squared um, DVDT. Something that we could, we could continue and just solve the differential equation from here, but something that will make our work a little easier, uh, less to write, is if you notice that RMG over B squared L squared, um, that actually is V terminal. That's the terminal velocity. So it's just less to write. This is just a ch clump of constants that happen to be equal to VT. So I'm just going to make that substitution. Minus VT plus V equals, and then this side I'm just going to leave it alone. RM over B squared L squared dV dt. Um, so now we've got to separate this thing and integrate to solve for velocity. What I like to do is take the entire left-hand side and shove it under the dV, and then everything else put back on the left. So in other words, this V minus VT that's here, I'm just going to put it under the, under the dV. So we get dV over V minus VT equals, and then everything else... I'm going to put back on the left. So it's going to be the reciprocal of this stuff back over here. So you're going to get minus b squared l squared um, over rm dt. So this, the equation has been successfully separated because I just have dt on this side and dv and v on this side. Um, so now we're ready to integrate. And so what you want to do is think about, well, okay, as far as time goes, I start my stopwatch at zero and I stop it at some arbitrary time. I click when I release it and then click again when I feel like checking on the speed. On this side, I'm going to assume that we start with an initial velocity of zero because we'll say we release it from rest. Okay. Um, if we didn't, you'd put some initial velocity there. And then the final velocity, you just want to put some arbitrary v. Sometimes people will make the mistake of thinking of putting vt here but then you'd have to integrate to infinity. Um, that's when it will get to V terminal, um, when time equals infinity. But instead, we're just saying, what is the V at some arbitrary time? Um, and so now we'll just quick work this out. Left integral, very easy. You have a bunch of constants, just integral dt from uh, uh, zero to t. So this side is just gonna be minus B squared L squared over Rm times t. Um, eventually this whole factor will be up in an exponent. You can kind of see the exponential decay coming. Um, this side, it's going to be log of V minus VT. But you have to be careful here and not be lazy with the limits. Um, so what you want to do is it'll be log of V minus VT with the upper limit put in. So that is V minus VT. And then over the same thing with, the, um, with zero plugged in. So you're going to get a minus VT in the denominator here. Uh, so we're almost done. The, what we need to do now is solve for the V. Um, by the way, in case people missed it, this would be, um, this integrates to ln of V minus VT. So you get ln V minus VT, then minus ln of minus VT. Um, but when you have log of a thing minus log of a thing, that's log of... Um, the first thing over the second thing. So I've kind of maybe skipped the line of algebra there. Um, and then, um, well, so what we have left is we just got to extract V and we're done. So what you want to do, right, is exponentiate both sides, um, e to the power of, you know, both sides. So 
e to the minus b squared l squared over t rm would be on the left, and then we need to exponentiate this. Um, so what I'm going to do just to create some space is let me get rid of this, and we'll just finish this problem up at the top. Um, so let's exponentiate both sides. Left side is going to become e to all this stuff, e to the minus b squared l squared over rm t. The right-hand side is just going to become v minus vt over minus vt. So to solve for v, what I would do is multiply the minus vt over and then add vt. And so finally what you'll get is v equals, it's going to be vt um, minus vt e to the minus v squared l squared over rmt. Final step that's kind of optional or something I like to do is if you factor out the VT from the right, you get V equals VT, and then you'll get what you may recognize as an exponential approach. Um, v squared L squared over RMT. Um, to see what I mean by exponential approach, if T equals zero, that's when we first release it. Um, e to the 0 is 1, so 1 minus 1 would be 0. Okay, so at initially at t equals 0, this whole expression is 0. It starts from rest. If you go to t equals infinity, right, e to the minus infinity is basically 0, and so you'll have 1 minus 0 in the parentheses here, which means that the velocity would approach vt at t equals infinity. So that's what we want. That's the, that's the behavior we would expect. Um, so this is your final expression for velocity as a function of time um, for this case of magnetic drag.